So April is Financial Literacy Month to raise importance on the topic and encourage smart money management habits. And joining us today to help us spread the message is Jeffrey Massey with Massey and Associates. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are we're, you? We're working the big room today. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's, good. it's good to have you here. So, <laughs> so there was actually a, a law that Congress passed about financial literacy. Tell us about that. Well, they wanted to bring financial literacy more to the forefront. And that was 20 years ago in mm -hmm. 2004. Even today, 43% of Americans cannot pass a high school level financial literacy test. And that's 20 years later of having Financial Literacy Month. So why do we think that that is the case? I mean, is it, is it that schools should be teaching more, more of it in, uh, as the kids are going to school? Which I absolutely think they should. They should not have balanced a checkbook. They should know that the card, the, that plastic card, doesn't print money. <laughs> you know, all that's, of these things. That's all a big of these part things, of it. Right? Absolutely. And when you look at it, you know, growing up, our parents never spoke with us about finances. Well, right. probably because we grew up in a poor family, mm -hmm. we didn't have much in the way of finances, right. but it was kind of taboo, and that's unfortunate. And people aren't sharing the knowledge that they've gained with their children, so it makes it much more challenging because of that. Is this why uh, we hear the stories that so many people, uh, look, times are tough, so many people are getting themselves into financial, tr financial trouble? They are. Uh, right now, Americans are carrying 17 trillion dollars of debt. Wow. Now that's half the federal debt level, which is over 34 trillion. Right. You know, that's pretty scary. And when you think about it, uh, the, the credit card defaults are up 50% in 2023. Mm -hmm. And I think that's primarily after the pandemic, the government just kept sending out money, right? right, right. So people got used to buying whatever they wanted and then they, then they just kept going and started adding credit card debt. Right. And now they don't have the ability to pay for it inflation, things are costing more money, right. and then they're using credit cards not just for big purchases like a big TV or a fancy trip, but for groceries, utility bills, rent payments, mm -hmm. and they're paying on average 25% interest wow. on the credit cards. And worse, 13% of people are paying 30% interest on credit cards. That is unbelievable. So when you're, you're talking about, for, for people who may not know, defaulting on their credit, meaning basically they can't play, pay, they can't pay the bill when it's when the you know the bill comes in. Not even the minimum payment. Wow. That's what that means. Right. And if you pay minimum payments, you are definitely in trouble. Right. That that's means just, you're overspending. Right. And that's just going to keep building and building and building, and you're never going to get out of it. You're never going to get out of that. Exactly. Debt. Think that's, of it. Yeah. If you carried a thousand dollar debt for a year, right. And you're paying twenty five percent. That's two hundred and fifty dollars in interest that you can no longer deduct right. from your taxes like you could many years ago. Right. You can't do that anymore. So what are some of the money lessons that we that we need? to learn and need to teach maybe some young people who, who are watching basically the card doesn't print money yeah. <laughs> what you're seeing, you know? I think parents are doing such a disservice by just giving their kids an ATM card right because they just go hit the ATM mm -hmm. they have no concept of what it takes to get that money there right and that's the important part now all right so pay down your debt control your spending or track your spending and think about your financial future in the way of retirement. We're retirement planning specialists, so we always want to look at that. Sure. So tracking your spending, you can use an app or old school pen and paper, track your spending. Because if you track something, you're, you're going to pay more attention to it. Mm -hmm. And if things are tight, you know, what's the discretionary items that you're spending money on? Are you spending four or five dollars a day on a, on a special coffee? Right. Well, why not do it at home? Mm -hmm. And that can save you five, five bucks a day, say. Right. Well, it's 20 bucks a week, Monday through Friday, times 50 weeks. How much is that? Yeah. That's a grand. That is, yeah. Uh, it yeah. adds up. It adds up. And it's those little differences that can change. Like, you, you, the Titanic didn't take a big right turn. It, it took small changes, right. Right? right? Incremental changes makes it easy and more sustainable. And then, as you pay down your debt, different ways to look at it, start at the smallest size, pay that one off, and then keep moving up, right. or, my preference, start with the highest interest rate, start paying that one down, right. because that's where you, you're spending the most money. But a spending plan, Nobody likes the word budget. Right. Spending plan makes the most sense. Track it, and you will ultimately do yourself a, a real benefit. Yes. And for the future, a Roth IRA. It'll That's be the a, big it'll one. be a weight off your shoulders, and money does not grow on trees. Thank you, sir, for being here. You can find these lessons and tips on financial literacy over at roadshow.com.